today we're going to talk about graphing in R. So I'm going to go ahead and open up R Studio, start typing into my console because I get a little bit cocky. <laughs> and I'm going to quickly realize that I don't remember how to effectively write in what I'm doing. I'm trying to get my working directory. But this is all to illustrate that I really do encourage you to use the script line up top when you're learning R. First and foremost, we need to, of course, set our working directory, which for me is the R underscore examples. This is where all of my files that I'm going to be importing and using during the session of R Studio are located. So again, one of the beautiful parts of using the script editor is that um, you can write yourself some notes. So now I'm going to write in what this git wd code actually means so that I never forget it ever again and I can just copy paste moving forward. Again, just to reiterate, it doesn't matter if you use the console or the script editor, they mean the exact same thing. And you can put your cursor anywhere on that line, click run and get it to move down into your active console. A little bit of review. So just like before, we're gonna go ahead and import our serials.csv file. And you can click on files just to remember um, what your file name is called. So again, everything to the right of the arrow, what we tell R to do is going to be named bfast when we import it. So what was serials.csv when we were working in Excel is now within the RStudio environment going to be called BFAST. So again, just going to double click on BFAST, pull it up here. We've got five columns with a bunch of different type of data. Next, I'm going to call the library called ggplot2 because any time that you're going to be making graphs in RStudio, I really, really, really want to encourage you to use ggplot2. There's excellent documentation online for using ggplot, um, and you just have a lot of control over um, creating publication-worthy graphics. Really powerful library. You can think of a library essentially as a program within a program, and you need to tell RStudio that this is what you want to use. So again, a little bit of re review here. I want to figure out what class or type of data our studio thinks our um, different columns are. So I use the class function and we can see that serial is a factor, AKA a category, and that calories is called an integer. Another way to look up essentially what type of data R Studio is interpreting when you are looking at a data set is to use dplayer. Um, so again, I'm going to call the program called dplayer using the library and then name of the, um, excuse me, <coughs> library. And then we can use this glimpse function, which is built in to dplayer. And it's going to pull up all of the different headers, all the different columns of data in our data set BFAST and tell us what they're interpreted as. So just to compare here, the class function that's built into RStudio tells you the exact same thing. So fat is seen as numeric. This DBL is essentially what RStudio, it's a, it's a fancier, more precise um, category for integers. Um, and also things that have decimals. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is make a histogram. So I'm gonna call ggplot, and then within parentheses, I need to list the data set, so bfast. And then I need to fill in the aesthetics. So this is essentially what I want our studio to make a histogram of. And then we use the geom underscore histogram function to tell R that I specifically want a histogram and then um, I type in bandwidth, or bin width, excuse me, which we're gonna explore in a moment here. And because I called this histogram, we actually need to call that histogram in order for it to pop up. So what happens if we change the bin width? 
you can see essentially the width of our columns and therefore our x-axis is going to change. You just need to play with that a little bit whenever you're making a histogram of your numeric data and see which one makes essentially looks the best. Now I'm not a fan of the gray background and grid lines, so I'm going to type in this extra line of code and expand our, our studio window here so we can see what I'm writing <laughs> called theme underscore classic. And you can see that that takes away all of the background, gives you a nice clean histogram. So this is how you make a histogram. I'm writing myself a note. So essentially I can just go back in and copy paste this code and update the data set and aesthetic information whenever I want to make a histogram in the future. Next, let's go ahead and make a bar graph. So a bar graph is very similar to a histogram, but you use this with categorical data. So again, I'm going to call this graph bar graph. You can call it whatever the heck you want. Type in ggplot because that's the function that we're using. The name of our data set and then the aesthetic in this case is going to be a categorical variable. In this case, it's going to be target. And then again, we need to tell R that we want to make a bar graph, which is the geom underscore bar. And then that theme underscore classic is what gets rid of the background information. So now we have this beautiful bar graph. Next, let's go ahead and make a box plot. Box plots are kind of a pain in the butt to make in Excel. So um, I recommend that you get comfortable with using them in um, RStudio. So this time I'm not going to name our graph um, and you're gonna see what happens. So again here, calling ggplot, our data set, and our aesthetic for each type of graph is gonna be a little bit different. When you're making a box plot, you need to let RStudio know what your X and your Y values are. And then geom underscore box plot is again, calling that specific structure for the graph. And then I click run and it just pops up. So when you're making graphs, you have the choice of naming your graph and then having to call the graph, or you can just type in the code for a graph without a name and it'll just pop up for you. It's really up to you. So next for a grouped bar graph, another option when you have both categorical and numeric data, a similar sort of syntax. So the important part when essentially this is just like a bar graph that we made earlier, but because it's a grouped bar graph, we need to use this position and then position dodge function. And you're going to see it's going to change the grouping of the different bars that our studio is going to create. I'm not explaining the guts of a lot of these graph functions because you can Google them and get just tons and tons of documentation if you have specific questions. Another option for both categorical and numeric data is a strip chart. And we're actually going to jitter the points here and you're gonna see what that looks like in just a moment. Um, <clears throat> essentially what it does is for each of the adult and children categories within the target, is that it spreads out those data points. And again, just like the histogram bin width, you can change the spread of that data. Now, strip charts are nice, but if you have a bunch of data sets, or I'm sorry, data points, having them in a straight up and down vertical line gets really confusing. So by jittering the data, essentially spreading them out a little bit along the x-axis, it's just easier to see. Again, you just need to play with it and get it to a point that is aesthetically pleasing for you.